I'm Alfred Bundy. Welcome to Meet the Leaders. This is our special coverage at the New Jersey League of Municipality Convention in Atlantic City. My special guest from the tw District 23 is Assemblyman John DeMeo. How are you doing, John? Good, sir. How are you? Pretty good. Tell us a little bit about your district. Well, our district compromises parts of three counties. My home county of Warren County, Hutterdon County, and Somerset County. We have 35 municipalities and about 225,000 people. Northwestern part of the state, pretty rural, pretty conservative. Uh, it, it's I used to live in Reddington. I used to I lived in Reddington for about nine years. And I may have represented you when you lived there at one point in time. <laughs> uh, tell us a, a, a little bit more about some of the issues that you think are, are relevant in your, your district that you're concerned about as far as uh, you as a legislator. Well, first and foremost, property taxes. Uh, we have state revenue growth that's unprecedented in the state of New Jersey. And instead of drilling down on things like school funding, for example, the school funding formula is probably a couple of billion dollars short of being fully funded. We've never funded it fully. No, and that's a mistake because then the burden is on the local property taxpayer. However, we go out and we start new programs, free community college, free pre-K. I'm not saying these are not worthy programs down the line, but if you can't afford to pay for what we own already. We shouldn't be buying new things. It's kind of like I can't afford the payment on my house, so I think I'll build an addition on it. It now just you, makes no sense. Now, have you sponsored any bill to make New Jersey a little bit more affordable? We, we have uh, bills in that would change the school funding formula, but the proviso is that if more money came to the local boards of education and they're at that local fair share number and at adequacy, the money that is above and beyond that, that comes back in aid, should be directed to the property taxpayer. Force the property taxpayer to get a relief back from their over taxation at the property tax level. That's a very interesting idea and concept. Uh, talk to us about as far as the business climate. I mean, is the governor doing a good job or uh, making sure that we're getting businesses to come to New Jersey? Well, well look, uh, we're, we're in the greatest economic expansion in the history of the country. And we're very fortunate right now. Uh, a lot of the success in, in, in job growth right now and, and business expansion is really coming from President Trump, quite frankly. Uh, the governor does some things that are counterintuitive to good business policies. For example, we have the EDA, which he didn't create, but there's a lot of issues with it. And he's actually talked about narrowing the amount of money that we give out in incentives and he wants, to, I know he'd like to take the rest of the money and spend it in the budget. I would like to see us narrow that down even more because there's one simple f reason that we need tax incentives. Corporate taxes are too high. New Jersey should be an economic powerhouse. Mm -hmm. We're situated between Philadelphia and New York City. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of room along the, the Turnpike Corridor and other parts of New Jersey. We have a highly educated workforce. Some of our peop young people that we spend $180,000 educating them from kindergarten through 12th grade. They go to college in another state and they stay somewhere else and all that money we invested goes, goes other places. Mm. We need to refocus the amount of incentives that we have down to a very narrow amount of money to the highest and newest high-tech jobs where we would have people having really great paying jobs and cut the corporate business tax at a lower rate so all of our business that are here do better and new ones will say, hey, New Jersey's going to have lower taxes. I want to be there. They're a hot spot to, to, to operate. But, but we're nowhere near that right now. No, we, we need to keep pushing for it. You know, you mentioned our 45th president. A uh, question I've been asking everybody, uh, what are we losing or gaining with Donald, Tr Donald Trump in the White House? Well, uh, the president does a lot of things that are uh, good for business and jobs. More people are working now than ever. Unemployment is low. He's really pro-business. He's changing, quietly changing some over-regulation in a lot of different areas that, that, are ham, that hamstring businesses and new jobs. Uh, he's doing things to with the jobs. Look at the stock market, for example. People's 401ks, IRAs, and public pension funds are doing very well as a result of businesses doing well. There's always this thing, oh, tax the corporations. Well, you know what? Let's let them be successful and let's get let our pension funds rise. So you would say what we're change. gaining is increased wealth and employment Correct. opportunities. Correct. 
I, I, finally, before we go, let me ask you, the governor is proposing through executive order to set up a state public bank. Good idea or bad idea? Bad idea. Bad idea. Uh, the government never does things as well as private private industry does or private you know, companies do. Listen, we have a lot of New Jersey banks that are doing a great job in New Jersey. It's just going to create another bureaucratic empire and it'll be a, a full of uh, people that are making money off of, of this uh, thing that really is not meant to be in the, in the public venue. Give me private capital you know, expansion. Uh, let's let the bank stay in the private bank. Assemblyman John DeMeo, District 23. Thank you. I'm Alfred Bundy for Altice USA. Thank you.